Every relationship has some form of manipulation. Unless you're the most self-actualized being in the universe, and I, I think you'd be off floating on a cloud somewhere and not listening to me right now if you were, you are sometimes manipulative and sometimes on the receiving end of manipulation. Today, we're gonna talk about the subtle signs as well as the big warning flags of manipulation. Then we're gonna talk about just why people manipulate and why you put up with it. And of course, as always, how to make it stop. So stay tuned. Hi, hello, are you there? Is this thing on? Yeah, I know it's on because I'm looking at my stuff. It's so good to have you back. If you're watching me on YouTube, you're seeing my really fabulous earring. And I, I just, I can't talk enough about my fashion sometimes, can I? Uh, anyway, if you're not watching me, you just have to listen to my melodious voice all on its own. If you are watching me on YouTube, you know, subscribe, like, do the things. Come on, do me a solid, do the things, because you love me. And thank you for the recent reviews. Oh my God, you know what I love most? No, what I love most is reading the reviews. <laughs> When they're good, don't leave me a bad one. What are you doing? Um, but they're really lovely to read, seriously. And they do help me sometimes. Like some people have said to slow down and other things. It does remind me maybe not to speak too fast. Although for a lot of people, I know you listen to me at 1.5 speed, which is also suggested in there sometimes because, you know, it can be long and you want to get through it. I understand. Uh, but I also love looking at people's handles. Um, someone who left a review recently, it was Billy Big Hands. I love you, Billy Big Hands. I, I, if you're out there, you're laughing right now. Oh, what a great handle to have. I think all mine are like Abby Metcalf, you know, very boring. Um, she's Pepper was one, like there's just lots of good ones. So just so you know, I read them, I enjoy them. They mean a lot to me. They do help people find the podcast and we are trying to create world peace. So help me do it. One relationship at a time. Okay. And uh, so today, is, the topic today came up a lot with your DMs and your emails and other things over the course of the last few months. And it, it was very consistent. And I kept sending people back to like, you know, the episodes I've done on gaslighting or how to deal with aggressive people. And I thought, I don't know, there's something different about manipulation in general that isn't gaslighting is a form of that and I'll talk about it but there's also much more subtle forms and I realized that I needed to give you this information you know that that I was treating sort of manipulative things as a like a big broad brush stroke and it's not and I think that's why there's been a lot of confusion uh, and a lot of uncertainty on your end about it so I'm gonna make it all clear today how do you like that because why because I love you that's right I love you I'm here so Let's do an introduction to manipulation. I'm introducing you to my friend, manipulation. No, not my friend. Um, so what I want to say first is that, so in relationships, and I'm talking about all relationships, so that could be a parent, uh, your partner, a coworker, a friend, a sibling. I, I mean anywhere. Manipulation can show, show up anywhere. So no matter where it is, it's an, it's an attempt to control how someone else thinks or how they feel or how they act, how they behave. That's really at its core what manipulation is. And an emotional, you know, we talk about, right, obviously emotional manipulation. And I want to always give the caveat that if you're in a really scary, physically abusive, um, harmful relationship, I, I, that's a whole other thing than what I'm talking about today. I, that is not what I cover, that I need you to call a mental health professional and speak live to someone, that that is not something you've taken lightly and just thrown away on a podcast, no way. So I wanna say that this is for kind of everybody else, which is granted the majority of people, but I, I in no way wanna minimize people's pain or what they're going through. So if you're in something on way on the edge of all this, please don't, you know, listen to this, like, oh, I just have to do these things. No, when things have gotten to a certain level, there's something else going on. Okay, so emotional manipulation, that's really what I'm mostly talking about in relationships. It's, I, it's very difficult to recognize. Again, and I did, I did, you know, I did my due diligence. I did some research. I looked at everything. I thought of my clients. I asked my clients questions to come up with today. And I, I, as always, I thank you for sending in topics because it brings me so much like 
mind opening about things that I think I know. Like, oh, I already covered this topic. Why aren't they listening? It's like, no, I haven't. This is this is got a broad, this is this is a lot of things. So I'm gonna anyway, I'm gonna cover it all today. So thank you when you write in. It really does help. Okay. So I, it can be really difficult to recognize this sort of, you know, emotional manipulation. And because it might be so subtle that all you end up doing is examining your own behavior rather than the other person's behavior. And you're wondering, you know, what you said wrong or you're doubting your intuition or your gut feelings. You, you know, maybe you've tried to speak to your mom about something that's upset you, but then you're, you're the one walking away feeling confused or drained or anxious or guilty. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Are you here? Raise your hand. Yes. So I'm going there today. I'm going to help you right there today. Okay. So, but the first things first, I need to talk about the most subtle sign of manipulation before I get into kind of the big guns. And because this is the only place to start our conversation today, this is the biggest, most common, but most subtle sign of of manipulation. This is something you've done to others. Yes, you've tried to manipulate manipulate someone else. Uh Uh-huh. And it's a way that that they've manipulated you, that you've been manipulated. It, we've all done this, every single, I can't, if you are not what I'm about to say, then you should stop listening because you are a perfect being. I don't know, <laughs> you're at a whole other level. And that's, what's the one thing? It's not saying how you really feel. That's manipulation, my friend, I know. Nobody always likes to hear this, but you've done it, I've done it. You've been in a situation where you haven't shared how you're really feeling about something. And it that's lying. <gasps> what? Abby. <gasps> yeah, I hear you gasping. I can hear it from here. But uh, just stick with me here. It, it is lying. I, I know it doesn't feel good to be called a liar. And you're not a liar. It's just a, a time that you lied. Okay? It, it doesn't make you a liar. But you're either... When you don't say how you're really feeling about something, you're either kind of outright lying in the moment because you might be saying you feel fine, oh, it's nothing, whatever, when you really don't, or you're not saying anything and walking away and you got lots of feelings, but you're lying by omission at that point. You're not saying this thing. So, and I also, okay, so maybe I said that a little to get your attention, <laughs> that everybody does it. I, but let, So let me clarify a little. It's not so black and white. I know, I know, you know. Come on now. You've known me a while. You know I'm not black and white about things. It but if you're not saying how you really feel in a moment in a moment because you want to take a minute and be mindful and get clear of what you're really feeling, that is something different than what I'm talking about. God bless you. You go. If you've been listening to my podcast and actually doing the tips, <laughs> then you understand that you're, you have a right to your feelings, but not your reactions. So if your usual thing is to fly off the handle and get really angry because someone said something to you and you're actually taking a beat and doing the right thing by not saying it. And they're saying, are you okay? And you're like, I'm okay. Because you want to like really think about it. Then I love you so, so much. I want to give you a big hug. Congratulations. That is putting on your big boy pants, or your big girl pants. I love it. And that is something a little different. Although I would really encourage you in those moments to say, you know what? I think I'm having a little bit of a reaction, not an action. And so just give me a minute. I want to kind of think about what you're saying. I want to I want to digest it a little and come back to you with what I'm really feeling about it. And people will appreciate that. Some people won't because they're anxious and they'll come chasing after you. But so whatever it is that you feel like you have to do in that moment, just to kind of put a pin in it, so to speak, so you can go think is fine. You know, sometimes you're at work, you're in the middle of a busy day and you just can't deal with, you know, Jessica from accounting or whatever. Um, then that's okay. So, but so, so that's healthy and not manipulative. As long as you swing back to the conversation at some point with your newfound brilliance, with your newfound clarity, that's the thing. What I found is that people will in a moment, you know, get good at not reacting in a moment, right? Knowing that what's going on in their heads isn't necessarily what they're really feeling. And then later they get in touch with their, um, maybe feelings of abandonment or shame or whatever else was there. And, but then they 
sometimes go, well, oh, but I don't need to circle back anymore because I feel better now. (laughs) It's still going to keep coming up. And I think it's a good idea at some point to share it. Now, like I have clients who share things with, and I tell them to, to share things with me and not their partners as we're working through some stuff because they're just so reactive and they're having maybe a trauma response or something else. And this is not something to share with your partner all the time or everybody else or whatever. This is something to do in therapy. If you're going to therapy, it's a good idea. Let's work on it. And then maybe bring some more of the results to the person. But I would always say at some point to discuss it with them. But timing does matter. So I, so again, I'm kind of saying something black and white and then telling you there's a lot of gray area in it. But you know me now. We know each other. We're close. So I, I think you can understand where I'm at. Okay. So, but I, but that's not most of you. Most people don't share how they're really feeling, not because they're, you know, being mindful and taking a moment and listening to every damn thing I say, which I wish was the answer, but it's not. Most people don't share how they're really feeling because they don't want to deal with the other person's expected response. You're not sharing so that the other person won't be angry or won't be upset or, you know, whatever other reaction you're fearing. You you don't want that thing, so you're not saying it. That's the very definition of manipulation. You're trying to control someone else through your words or actions. That's what a manipulation is. That's what I said in the beginning. That's what it is. So I'm not saying you're a bad person for doing this. I'm not a bad person when I do it, because yes, I do it. I'm only saying that we all need to be aware. We need to be honest about what we're doing. So that is what I try to do. If I'm not saying something to someone in a moment and it's because I I don't want to deal in that second, or maybe I've just had this conversation 400 times and I'm not sure how to have it differently today. I, I might not, I might not say it. And I don't want to beat up on myself, but I also don't want to pretend. So I do pin it somewhere in my consciousness as something I need to come back to at some point to think about, maybe to talk to my therapist about. Oh, of course I have a therapist. You better believe she hears a lot. Um, Do you know what I mean? Or my coaches or the people I trust. I will come back to it often to them and try to figure out a new way to approach it. So, but it's all about that awareness. Um, So, because like manipulation hurts relationships, period. Even if that's that you don't say how you really feel. And you know how that is when you ask your partner or somebody else how they feel and they say, I'm fine, everything's good. And you know it's not and you feel crazy. It's the same thing. You're doing it to them and they're doing it to you. You know, It hurts a relationship. It breaks down trust and it becomes a problem. But any kind of root of manipulation does. Okay, so that's the most subtle, the most common in the world. So I just want to have an even playing field here as we talk about it. Okay. So let's talk about the other signs of manipulation and, you know, almost uh, the almost all the other ones I would say are some kind of emotional blackmail. If I had to get really real about it all, you know, someone else is trying to make you feel guilty or upset for a decision you've made or a boundary you've drawn. And so it's emotional blackmail. You know, I, I, um, I have a client who's dealing with a daughter with mental health issues and the daughter's always threatening to kill herself if the mother doesn't like give her money for drugs or other things, or I guess I'll just go turn tricks now and you know, you force me into this, this kind of thing. And you know, she's been really great with her boundaries with her and doing such a good job. But you know, her daughter of course knows every little button to push and she is terrified for her daughter. And uh, you know, you gotta draw the boundary. So that's emotional blackmail. And so the response is when someone says to you something like that, like, I'm going to kill myself, you're like, then I'm going to call 911. If you're telling me you're going to kill yourself, I'm going to call 911 right now. And and my client, by the way, has called 911. She had to do it three, was it three? Two or three times. I'm not 100% sure on that. And you know what? Her daughter stopped threatening it. It stopped. People kept showing up at the house. It stopped. And one time, by the way, they did take her because... I don't even know why. I think she thought she was going to get drugs in the rehab, in in detox. But anyway, they did take her. But the other two times, you know, they come, they assess, they realize they're not necessarily dangerous themselves in the moment and they go. And that is what you can do because you can't stop this person. And by the way, you might give them money for drugs and they, and they OD on that. And then you have killed them. So in that way. 
So, ah, there is no good answer here. There's no easy answer here, I should say. There is a healthy answer, but there's no easy answer. I'm just saying, you know, you got to get clear on what emotional blackmail really is and how to deal with it. Okay. So there's a lot of forms that manipulation can take. Gaslighting, obviously, <clears throat> is probably the most common thing I think people think about when they think of being manipulated. I've covered the signs that someone is gaslighting you and what to do about it in depth, so I'm not going to go deep on it here. Uh, again, you can look up narcissism on my website, or I'm sure I'm one. I, and I do, we have heard a lot of feedback, by the way, you've been writing in that it's hard, you, the first hundred episodes of the podcast don't show up everywhere. And we're, we're working hard on creating like a big master list of all the podcasts I've done and all the topics and all the tags so that you can easily search for those on the website at least, or by the exact title when you're looking on, you know, in one of the, you know, Pandora or, or uh, Apple or Spotify, wherever you get my, you listen to me, I'm, I'm everywhere. Um, so we are trying to make that easier because I think this is episode 239 or something. I mean, I've got a lot of episodes. I've covered a lot of stuff and I don't want you to miss anything. So we are working on that. Michelle, my trusty right hand and I are working on that. Um, I should say she is. I'm not. Okay. But it's happening. So just know that. But anyway, but for now, put in gaslighting on my pod, on my website, put in narcissism on my website. You'll come up with all this stuff, okay? So just let you know. But in, in general, I want you to know that gaslighting is, it's, it's a very dangerous form of manipulation. And it's really where someone acts in a way that you start doubting your perceptions, uh, your memory, uh, or your just your judgment, right? So it's a... It's, uh, it's dangerous. It's bad. We don't want it. Okay. Passive aggressive behavior is probably the second most common form of manipulation that people talk about. Again, you'll be shocked to hear I've done an entire episode on how to deal with passive aggressive people. So I'll just say here that, um, and by the way, everything is linked on the show notes page on my website. So if you want to go there and hit all these links to all the podcasts, you can do that too. Anyway, um, but I'll just say that Passive aggressive folks, you know, basically these are people that don't express anything they're thinking or feeling directly. And that can range from, you know, lots of sarcasm to uh, a martyrdom is what I grew up with. You know, I'll just do it myself. And I used to do that back in my 20s because that's what I learned at home. So that's what I did before I got healthier. Yeah. Um, or avoidance, you know, uh, uh, it's very passive aggressive, you know, that I didn't hear you. That's why I didn't put away the dishes kind of thing, right? All of those are examples of passive aggressive behavior. And, uh, you know, heavy sighs or maybe some pouting. <laughs> but, you know, you ask what's wrong and they tell you it's all fine. Uh, yeah. The other big sign of manipulation, is, and I've talked about this before, is what sometimes I call it crave. Sometimes I call it verb. Uh, we call it a lot of things, but basically it's, and I'll do the verb today, V-E-R-R-B. When I do crave, it's kind of the same things, but anyway, it's acting like a victim. So if the other person is acting like a victim, or if you are, either way, this is, it's manipulation to act like a victim. I know, you hate hearing this, but I'm telling you because I love you. Acting entitled, thinking you can read someone's mind or that they can read, should read yours. He should know what I want for my birthday or... Um, you know, uh, uh, oh, I know what he's going to say, so I'm not going to say it or any of that kind of crap. It's such bullshit. Um, re waiting to be rescued, you know, when sometimes the manipulative person is looking for you to fix something and they're like manipulating you into fixing it, kind of like my, um, it's a little bit also like my client I just mentioned with her drug addicted daughter. Uh, or be blame, so that's verb blaming someone else for anything in your life. And I mean anything because we are adults and unless someone is holding you against your will, then none of that should be happening and it's manipulative. So if you're doing it, if you're blaming someone else for your lot in life, you're being manipulative. I know this is hard to hear. It can be hard to hear. I'm not saying you're being mean. I'm not saying you're doing it knowingly or consciously, uh, but it's what it is. And you are responsible for your life 
fully 100%. No, if I've taught you nothing else in 240 whatever episodes, I hope it's that. If you want to be happy, if you want to find satisfaction in your life, if you want to really do great things in the world, you have to take full responsibility for your life and stop blaming other people. It is not anyone else's job to make you happy or to make you any way in the same way that no one can make you upset or make you feel a certain way. As we know, right? Said this over and over. So I want to be clear, and you might be there right now going, Abby, that's crap. That's not true. I would ask you to listen like you're wrong and go back and listen to other episodes where I cover this in depth. But if just don't get into verb, <laughs> any of those things, acting like a victim, acting entitled, waiting to be rescued, thinking you can read minds or that people can read yours or are blaming others. Okay. I, I actually have an episode called the five signs you're in an unhealthy relationship. And again, I think I call it, I use the acronym crave. I change the acronym sometimes. What do you want from me? I try to get creative. Um, but you can look that up and you can go deep into that. Okay. Uh, the silent treatment, that's another form of ma manipulation. You know, the cold shoulder, withholding love, affection, sex, uh, withdrawing from you, if the other person's withdrawing from you, or if you're withdrawing from them, this is all manipulation because you're doing something to try to get them to act differently. That's what you're doing. Um, too much love is another sign of manipulation in the, like at the beginning of a relationship. You know, it can seem wonderful when someone is just all about you, but I think you should see it as a warning sign when it's too much because you know it's too much in your gut. It just feels off and wrong. They are, you know, gifts, you know, extravagant gifts, trips, constant attention, compliment, like it never seems to stop. It's a warning sign. It's a problem. There's, there isn't a, you just met this person. Maybe you've known them a month. There's no foundation to support this kind of all inness, this kind of behavior. And the person, it's, they're, manip they're trying to make you think the relationship is stronger or more than it actually is. They are trying to get you to feel a certain way about them. It, that's manipulation. And they're going all in to do it. Now, I'm not saying anytime someone does a nice thing for you that, the, of course, you know, I guess in some ways, all nice things, maybe, I don't know. Am I manipulative right now? I'm doing the podcast. Is that manipulative? I have to think about that. I don't think so. No. Um, but, right, it is good sometimes to stop and ask yourself, like, is this manipulative? Uh, <laughs> I get, <laughs> in some ways, I get a little coercive with you. I'm like, hey, Jewish mother, listen. Um, but it's really, the way you really know is, is, is it from love or fear? when you're acting a certain way and you're doing this. So when someone is trying to get you to love them or to think they're great or to think their relationship is more than it is, they are, that's from fear because of their own low self-esteem or their own feelings about themselves or whatever. When you're just doing something kind of nice for someone out of nowhere, it's of course because you, you know, love them, you like them, but you're not trying to get them to whatever with you. Um, that's not what's happening. A lot of times we do random acts of kindness. People don't even know we did it. And it feels good because it feels good. That's allowed. You're allowed to feel good. But you, you, the difference is usually, or is always, sorry, where it comes from. So, so I always want you to think that way. Um, that another form of manipulation is when people say like, well, other people think this way. You know, your friend said it too, or me and me and all your friends think this, or me and your siblings think that. I, people can manipulate by, that's they're doing that by saying that everyone feels this way. They're trying to justify their own opinions. Well, everybody thinks that. Every, no one likes you. Everybody says this. You know, that's such bullshit and you should call bullshit on it. Uh, they also might call your family or friends behind your back to get their support to kind of, you know, gang up on you in some way. Again, this is very manipulative. Um, obviously, over lying or constant omissions of things is manipulative. You know, uh, exaggerating things is manipulative. You know, trying to maybe make themselves look better. Um, omitting important information, saying they forgot, right? All of these th fall in that category. Uh, threats are another form of manipulation, you know, threatening to leave you, uh, threatening to hurt themselves, as I mentioned before, um, you know, your dad threatening to, or your mom to cut you out of the will if you act a certain way, you know, this kind of stuff, or maybe we'll just won't invite you or we'll never come over to your house again, this kind of stuff. Threats are definitely manipulative. Um, another form of manipulation is when people assign meaning to things. 
Uh, so maybe you, they ask you to pick you up at, hey, can you pick me up at the airport on Tuesday? And you're like, oh my God, I can't. I've got work all day. I've got so much going on. Can you, can you grab an Uber instead? <clears throat> maybe you hear something like, well, if you love me, you'd take the day, you'd pick me up at, from the airport. Or maybe they try to minimize it. You know, I'm not asking you to give up the whole day at work. I'm just saying, could you come get me? You know, this kind of stuff. That is manipulation. Uh, and I guess this goes with sort of like dramatic statements, you know, I thought you love me, you of all people should understand, you know, you're the only person uh, who's ever loved me or if I've ever loved, all that kind of crap, right? And, and let me say this, so you know, so you might see all this stuff and go, I don't know, always Abby, I'm not sure if I've been manipulated. I can't really tell where it's from or whatever. And here's how you tell, by how you feel. That's how you tell. It's by how you feel. If you feel, confu again, consistently, not every now and then, if you could walk away from a conversation with someone, you feel confused, it doesn't mean they were manipulating you. But if you are always walking away from conversations with your sister feeling confused, that is something to look at. If you consistently feel guilty or inadequate, if you feel less than after a conversation with this person all the time, if you feel disappointed in yourself or like you can't trust yourself, if you constantly feel stuck, frustrated, exasperated, resentful, hopeless, um, unsure, or like you're walking on eggshells all the time, that's manipulation because again, other things come from love. You might get upset. You might not, you know, like what someone is saying to you. You don't always have to like what someone is saying to you, but you don't walk away feeling like the worst person ever. That when someone can really come at you with a loving heart and you're, you know, open, like I want you to be, it doesn't mean, and maybe even originally, like I, I used the example before, maybe you're, you know, always your initial reaction is to get angry at things, which is a manipulation, by the way. I know, I know, I'm just saying it like it is because what does it do? When you get angry, people stop telling you things. They stop giving you feedback and it makes them um, feel bad instead of you. It like It's a manipulation. That's what you're doing when you get angry. When that's your only arrow in your quiver, that's the only response you ever have to anything, to any feedback, it's a problem. It's it's That's something else. I'm not saying you're being mean. Again, please, I love you. I, this is not to beat up on yourself. This is to get real with yourself and to look at your behavior and change it. So if, if, if what happens with constant manipulation, again, consistent, is that it affects your self-esteem and it you could even get anxious or depressed around it i mean clinically so it's it's a thing all right so let's talk about why people act manipulative manipulatively <laughs> why am i having trouble today i better have a sip of my my tea <clears throat> okay i had a little cold last week so sorry about my voice being a little scratchy no COVID, everything's fine. Okay, so why do people act in a manipulative way? Well, the research shows consistently that, first of all, that most people manipulate in some way from time to time. Did I say that well? Yeah, I, like I started this thing with. Everybody manipulates in some way from time to time. That there, There's research on this, it's just the way it is. Like, I'm sure I'm bringing up all these examples and you're like, damn, I do that, damn, I do that, yeah. So in my, but I want to say this, in my long experience, almost 40 years, <laughs> the majority of people who manipulate aren't aware that that's what they're doing. They're just not. They just think it's, this is how you're supposed to act with your partner, your boss, or your friend. That's just what they think. Now, and for those who do know they're being manipulative, the majority of them don't realize how they're affecting you. They don't get it. I talked to a client the other day and he was he was talking to me and his old girlfriend had called him who his current girlfriend is very jealous of. And he said, oh my gosh, you know, my ex called me. But, uh, you know, and I, I spoke to her for two seconds and I shut it down. Like he, you know, he said, I, I just said to her, please stop calling. I'm going to block your number. He told her that. And he hadn't blocked it yet, which I did ask him about. I said, why didn't you already block it? Uh, but anyway, 
So, but then he said, well, I'm not going to tell my current girlfriend because I'm not interested in my ex. I told her stop calling. It's not hurting anyone. So I'm not going to tell her. That's manipulation. He does not want to deal with the fallout of that. And he's doing it in this guise of making his current girlfriend happy. You know, what she doesn't know won't hurt her kind of thing. And yeah, I guess that's true to a point, but that's not the main reason why. Because you know, she wants to know. She's told you anytime you hear from this woman, I want to know. I think that's a different issue, by the way, that should be addressed between the two of them that I've been working on him with. But since it's there and he agreed, now he's just lying. I said, now you're, you're lying. You're lying to her because you agreed to this one thing and that's not what you're doing. Anyway, that's a problem. That's manipulation. But there's, but it's, again, that group of people, they're not thinking they're hurting you by doing it. They don't realize you're having a, you know, the people that don't share how they're truly feeling about something. They don't think they're hurting you. They actually think they're saving you by not saying it. So they know they're doing it, but they don't think it's affecting you in the way it is. And then there's a final, very small group, again, this is in my experience, who are absolutely aware of their lies, their gaslighting, their manipulation, and how all this is impacting you and maybe even enjoying it. But I have to tell you, this is such a minor percent of people who manipulate. And I'm saying that so you can have, first of all, some compassion for someone who might be manipulative in your life, um, some compassion for yourself in your own manipulating in your life, uh, and to really get it out of the, I think we just, we hear this word manipulation and we immediately go to the gaslighting and the bad and the thing. And it's like, whoa, everybody just like slow your roll. We have all these words now for all this fancy <laughs> things that people can do. And I think they've become buzzwords and are overused. So again, in my experience, this isn't the majority of people. It, it might be happening to you though. You might be with someone who's gaslighting. I'm not saying you're not. I'm just saying don't always leap to that big place. So because most people who manipulate aren't bad. These aren't like the bad guys, the bad women. They're taking part in an unhealthy behavior because it's what's normal to them. Or they probably have a mental health issue that needs to be addressed. It's one of those two things, more or less. There, you know, it's, or it's more than one. There's a lot of complex reasons for people to need to have control, because that's what that is in their relationships or to avoid feelings or to avoid conflict. There's a, there's, a, there's a reason for that. There's multiple reasons. We're complex humans, right? I'd say the biggest, the foremost, the top is how you were raised. Anyone who's consistently manipulative is likely saw that modeled in their house growing up. This it shows up in so many ways. Maybe your dad consistently said, don't tell your mom when the two of you were out having fun or something. Uh, so now you see it as normal to keep secrets from your spouse. Maybe when you said how you felt in your home growing up, you were told you don't really feel that way or it wasn't that bad, so stop crying or whatever. So you then grow up not trusting your own or other people's feelings. You know, you can see how I could go on and on with how your childhood could affect and the little things you heard could affect how you are as an adult in your manipulation right? It's uh, a lot of times people explain things in their heads and then don't say anything and it kind of comes out sideways. I mean, it just goes on and on again because of what they knew. Maybe you grew up in a house where you needed to manipulate just to get your basic needs met. Maybe you had to lie and steal to get food. I don't know. Or any attention or any money or whatever. It, you know, it's very easy to judge other people, but you know, walk a mile in their shoes kind of thing, right? So that's, I'd say, the number one thing I see, it's something having to do with how you were raised, what you saw as normal, what you were around a lot. Um, the uh, Another reason people are manipulative is they have uh, having a personality disorder, right? Like borderline personality disorder, narcissistic personality disorder. I've talked about both of these before on you know, on the podcast. So go look up those episodes if you want to learn more about them. But definitely there's a lot of manipulation in personality disorders. Um, you could have an act or the person could have an active drug or alcohol addiction. I was super manipulative when I was a using heroin addict. Holy cannoli. And yes, some of that hung on in early sobriety until I kept working on things. But, uh, you know, it eventually I got somewhere, you know, with it. Um, and again, I'm like you, I'm human. I'm, I 
I sometimes don't say how I feel. I do that things, but I, I try hard not, you know, to be very overt with how I'm feeling or my intentions or what, why I'm doing something so that people can decide. And that's, and that's why it's not manipulative on the podcast, even though I try to boss you around because I'm very open <laughs> with why and where it's from and where I got the information and, you know, and let's face it, I don't have any control over you. Like, and, and I know that, so that's all good. Okay. So having a drug alcohol problem can be that. Having low or no self-awareness, um, poor communication skills will make you manipulative. And I would say for sure having an anxious attachment style or high anxiety, those people can be quite manipulative. And again, if you have an anxious attachment style, don't freak out. You know, it's okay. You're, you're listening. You're trying to be better. But there's likely some stuff there, right, with, you know, maybe you're always asking for compliments or reassurances about how something's going or, you know, there, there's a lot of ways that anxiety or an anxious attachment style can show up in a relationship that is manipulative, you know, where you're trying to get someone to say something or do something to make yourself feel better. Uh, that, you know... Welcome, welcome to the human race. I love you. Okay. So now let's go to the other side. Why do people allow or accept manipulation? Yeah. I uh, know. Because we got no victims here, right? So in all of this, there's a giver and a receiver. And it's very easy and convenient to blame the manipulator. But if you're in a relationship where this has been going on for a while and you haven't left or created safe boundaries or whatever, then it's time for you to take full responsibility for your side of the street. I'm not going to sit here and let you think like, oh, poor me. And it's just this person. If they don't change, there's nothing I can do. Fuck that. Yeah. I don't swear often when I do. It's because of that bullshit. Oh, makes me crazy. I'm yelling in my office. I don't know if anyone's around. Okay. I'm going to take a breath. I just, we can't have that. You and I cannot have that. This is not the podcast for you if that's how you want to be. If you do, I love you. I hope you keep listening because you can change this, but it's not what I'm about. I am not going to co-sign any of your crap because I believe in you and I want you to have a happy life. And you're not going to have a happy life when you put all of the power into someone else's hands to make you happy. Can't be. Then it's always other people and you, you're you nothing. And that's, again, the low self-esteem and the low confidence and all the crap. And and I'm not here for that. I, I'm not, I'm not going to support you in that. I'm going to support you in getting well and being happy and joyous and satisfied and excited and enthusiastic. That's what I'm here for. If you're here for that, keep listening. All right. Oh, I was on my little soapbox, my Jewish mother soapbox. There I was. Okay, I'm back. So if you're allowing yourself to be manipulated and, and just because you see it doesn't mean you're not allowing it, right? And that's how you need to think of it. Um, yeah. Well, okay. And that if you're allowing yourself to be manipulated. I'm just going to say that. Sorry. I was going to go off on another tangent, but I don't need to. <laughs> Again, unless you are physically being held against your will, that is a, t my t I said in the beginning, you know, physical violence and that kind of stuff is very different. Okay. And that's not what we're talking about today. So it's really just time to get educated and learn the skills necessary to draw boundaries and to stick to them. A boundary is nothing if you don't stick. That is what the boundary is. Otherwise you're just stating things you want. You're, you know, if you're stating a standard, hey, people have to treat me with respect, but you don't do anything about it, that's not a boundary. It's not a boundary to say to someone, uh, you have to treat me this way. It's a boundary when, if they don't treat you that way, that you do something about it. That's the boundary. <coughs> you got me so upset that I'm coughing. Hold on. Sorry, scratchy throat. Okay. So... Most people allow themselves to be manipulated really for a lot of reasons. And it's a lot of them are the same reasons that a person manipulates. So again, how you were raised. You might be a fish who doesn't even know it's wet. You might not realize that something is manipulative. You might only see that you feel bad because of what you saw as normal in your own family growing up. So all the things I've said before might apply to you too. You know, all the ways that, you know, things that were... Uh, usual in your household 
and you thought, well, it's just the way you do it. You know, you, you, you have, you know, you have rules in your head, beliefs. Well, you can't give up on family. You have to be there for your mom. You, you have to show up if your dad calls. You have, like, you just have these have to's in your heads, which, which aren't real. And I want to be clear that it's not about abandoning every value you hold dear. It's about putting yourself in those values. <laughs> so yeah, family is, I, my relationships are the most important thing in my life by far, by far. And my relationship with myself is included in those relationships. It's not just everybody else and not me. I'm included. So, and being the best person I can be in that relationship. And so, you know, I'm a better partner to Gary. I'm a better mom to Max McCartney. I'm a better friend to all my wonderful besties, right? I, I'm a better therapist, you know, psychologist. I'm a better podcast host, all the things, right? Because I take care of myself and, and my boundaries matter in this. Yeah, let that sink in. Uh, <clears throat> so how you were raised might be a reason you're allowing yourself to be manipulated. Fear of abandonment or being alone, big ones, and those come from your childhood too. Uh, extreme codependency, people pleasing. Uh, this would include, you know, fawning, which I talked about, which is a trauma response. It's a fawning is like people pleasing on crack, which is a trauma response. I will link to all I've done episodes on people pleasing, how to stop people pleasing, you know, how... Uh, your people pleasing might be a trauma response, uh, codependency, you know, I've done them all go look. <clears throat> so sorry, we'll get you there. Um, another reason I see is not having the social support to uh, people stay manipulative, manipulated because they don't have the social support to help them leave. They, again, if you're just in your family and this is all you have, and this is all you've ever known, and this is all you know, your friends, everything is this one family, and they're being in a you know unhealthy with you and manipulative. If you have nothing outside, you know you've never gone to therapy, you don't have any other friends, you don't you know who are outside the family, you you know it's really hard to, to stop. So my heart goes out to you. I love you, and I'm glad you're listening right now. If that's you, because this is your way out. This is the start of your social support to help you like maybe not physically leave, but ment you know, mentally draw the boundaries you need to draw and maybe even physically leave, who knows? Okay, so let's talk about what, it, what to do if you're in a manipulative relationship of any kind, okay? And these are my, I think I have like five quick little tips or steps or whatever you wanna say. All right, because again, I covered so many tips in all the other ones, how to stop your people pleasing, what, how to deal with gaslighting, how to deal with, you know, I, I don't want to sit here and just repeat them all. So I want to give you something new every podcast. Um, so I'm going to get very specific right now. Number one is I want you to trust your gut. So, and the way to do this, cause you know, when you're being manipulated, you know, cause you feel like crap. The problem is you are so out of touch often with your feelings, with identifying them, with acknowledging them, with knowing them. So I need you to start practicing feelings, understanding, identifying all that your feelings is a skill. And like any skill, you have to practice it to get better. I used to suck so bad. If there was a trophy for being bad at feelings, I would be in first place. Okay. Um, or would have been. I, it's still something I have to work on. It's not my immediate to, even after all these years and all this therapy and all the things I know, uh, I can easily dismiss my feelings again because of how I was raised and all that good stuff, right? My drug addiction, blah, blah, blah. We know all the reasons why you fucked up, Abby. We don't need to hear them. Okay. So what I tell my clients to do and what I do myself is you want to practice identifying and naming feelings on a daily basis, like all day long. Keep, do it for one week. <clears throat> Keep a little journal or notes in your phone, whatever you want. And just all day long, just, you know, how am I feeling right now? Just stop. Maybe every time you eat, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry. I don't edit the podcast like that. So you wanna hear my coughing. <laughs> Means I'm at the end. I'm, we're almost done. So when you're at the end of something, you know, when you're, sorry, we're not at the end yet. When you're, um, uh, doing something like, uh, again, like eating, maybe every time you go to the bathroom, I don't care, but stop and think, how do I feel right now? It's a moment of mindfulness. Name, identify three feelings. No, no good 
fine, okay, none of that shit, you know, like real feelings. And then from there, do you know what I mean? Like start getting good at feelings. So what happens then when you're in conversations with people or you're, you know, getting into it in a relationship, you're going to actually know how you feel and be able to identify it and learn to trust your gut and acknowledge its rightness in your life. It, It doesn't mean your facts are correct in a conversation, but it does mean your feelings are correct in a conversation, right? You know, thinking about how do I feel right now in this conversation, that's what's really going on. And the better you get at that, again, it's a skill, just practice. I promise you'll get better. I promise. I guarantee. I like that. I guarantee. Just practice feelings all day long, as often as you can. And what'll happen is you will start to be in a conversation with someone and see how off it feels. You might not know why, that's okay. But this is your first inkling that maybe there's some, again, if you feel drained or overwhelmed or confused all the time or like, what? Like, you know, if it's always what the fuck, like what is going on? That lets you know there's likely some manipulation, some gaslighting, something else going on. And you can stop and reassess. Okay, so... Two is to trust those feelings. So now that you've identified your feelings, it's time to focus on feelings, not facts, in the conversation. So when you engage, you want to focus on specific situations and focus on feelings, not the content. That's where you get into trouble with people who are manipulative. They're, you know, they'll do that. So uh, the I feel formula, I've talked about it so many times on here. I will have it as a free download Yes, you'll get on my weekly love letter list. And yes, you should want to be on there. I don't sell anything on there. It is just love, 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 love. It's meant to inspire you every week. And they're really good. People like it. People love my my love letters. I love writing them. It's another way I get to connect with you. So, you know, you can go to the website and just go to the love letter and sign yourself up with your email. Or if you don't like it, unsubscribe. It's There's thousands of people on there. I'm not going to notice if you unsubscribe, trust me. <clears throat> or go download the I feel formula and you'll get on there automatically. Okay. But it's a great way to get good at this. Um, uh, so it's I feel when you and I need. Okay. That's what it is. You can download it or listen now. So it might be, um, and you want to, don't name more than two feelings. So I feel discouraged and sad when you consist, when you, Uh, consistently take no responsibility or when you haven't taken any responsibility in this conversation remember don't use kind of always language when you never do you know don't do that Um, and I need and I need you to tell me one thing that's your responsibility in this situation you do that Um, I'm trying to think of another one Uh, I feel I feel, I feel confused and frustrated. I'm trying to put myself in situations how I would feel. I feel confused and frustrated when you insist that I've said something I didn't. This is something that just came up with a client the other day. And I need you to listen like you're wrong. I I need, I need you to listen differently again. Do Do you see that? I feel when you and I need, all of them should be short and sweet. Don't get too pulled in because they'll start on all the crap. Number three is to be in charge of the conversational flow. One of the things with manipulators is they take charge of conversations and you don't have to let them, okay? You don't. You can be in charge of the conversation and it's important to take a breath and not get defensive yourself. How to listen without getting defensive and hurt. Look it up on the website. Okay, you want to give the per- other person room to, ha- to, sh- to sh- have their say and share what they're thinking and feeling. And I would even do that first often. Um, and I know you're thinking, oh my God, it's so all they do is talk. Well, okay, let them do it. But then at the end, I want you to restate it. So I want you to say what I hear you saying is, and I want you to fact check it with them. And is this correct? What I heard, is that what's correct? And Make sure they, you know, just keep going until they say, yes, that's what I said. Then, by the way, that stops a lot of bullshit right there. I just want to tell you. But now you can say, I'd like to share what I'm thinking. Can can you listen to that without interrupting me? And then if they do start to interrupt, just stop. Just stop. You don't have to get upset. You don't have to yell and scream. Just stop talking. Just stop talking. Just stop. They'll run down at some point. And then you can stop and say, I feel frustrated and angry when you interrupt me 
when when I've been when I've clearly asked you not to, and I need for us to I need to ask you if you can really not interrupt so I can finish what I'm saying. There you go. So, <laughs> and if they can hear it, and then you would share something, and then ask them, "What did you just hear me say?" That this is probably more important than anything, because trust me, they heard all kinds of crap. Oh, uh, you said that you're perfect, and I'm the only wrong one, and I'm, it's like, oh, what did I, what did I say that made you think I said I was perfect? Did I use those words? I'm perfect. When did I use the words I'm perfect? I don't remember that. And you know, you just stick with it. I'm telling you, it's like wearing them down. That's your job. They will get frustrated before you will if you stick with it. And I, I think of it like I used to do with my kids when they were little. You know, they would ask something or, you know, kids, kids are relentless. And our job as parents is to draw a boundary and just stop it, right? To not keep responding, to not, you know, I said a lot when my kids were little, asked and answered. If they asked me something and I answered it, then they came back five minutes later and said, oh, can we go to the park? You know, and I said, you know, no. And then five minutes later, can we go to the park? I'm like, asked and answered. And I just would go along my way. And I would say, oh, hey, do you want some? I would kind of change the subject. Do you want something for lunch or whatever? And and if they kept doing it, I would often say, if you ask again, there's going to be, um, I'm going to have to put you on timeout when they were little, you know, or I'm going to have to put, you know, you're going to have to go read in your room. You're going to need to whatever. I didn't do timeouts that much, but uh, we would do like reading in your room or quiet time. They clearly needed to be quiet a little bit and be on their own. And so, you know, there would be some sort of response and again, you want to do that with adults too. It doesn't just work on kids. It works great with adults, right? Uh, so asking them to repeat back what you said and then sticking with it, it's an, and you're keeping a tight frame on the conversation. That's what you're doing. You're in control of it, not them. Keep the conversation on topic. You might bring something up and the other person would say something like, me, you know, what about you? You do the same thing all the time. Again, your job, is to, you know, you wanna say something like, I'm, I'm approaching you right now, so I hold the floor. If you wanna talk about my behavior another time, I'm all ears, let me know when. Right now, we're talking about X. And they might even keep trying, right? They might go, oh yeah, it's all great, we're talking about me, you just never wanna talk about you, and then you're gonna say you have no time. I don't know what they'll say, they'll say bullshit, right? But again, it's just BS, so let them go, and then just stop and say, so are we gonna talk about this or not? Are you telling me that you refuse to talk about this thing with me? Is that, that's what you're telling me by what you're saying. So is that what's happening? Because I would like to talk to you about this thing right now. Again, happy to make a time right now if you want. Let's make a time for us to talk about me. Let's do that. You can tell me all the things. What, you, Friday at 12? Great. Let's write it down. So now let's come back. Here we are now. Do you know what I'm saying? Just don't get off course. The problem is that we get so upset and so drawn in and all the things because, and it goes without saying, I would hope at this point, but I'm going to say it obviously because you need to be mindful and aware of your emotions and reactions as you're interacting with this other person. You can't allow yourself to get caught up in defensiveness or your anxiety. You got to stop. You got to breathe. You got and stay in the engaged in the moment as you talk. That is your job. Number four, set and hold the damn boundaries. I've already discussed how to make boundaries, the importance of holding those boundaries, all the things. <laughs> uh, this is what it's all about. If, if you keep doing what you've always done, you're going to get what you've always got. We say that a lot in the program, right? If, you're gonna, if you keep doing what you've always done, you're going to get what you've always got. So the new thing to do is to hold your boundaries. Remember, just saying you have a boundary, you need to treat me this way. That's very nice. That's not a boundary. That's not a boundary. It's not a boundary to tell people what you expect. It's a boundary when you tell them what you expect and then say an X will happen if you don't. That's a boundary. That's the boundary I need you to have. Having non-existent or unclear boundaries is the easiest way for you to be manipulated. So you've got to make these a top, top, top priority. My boundary, you know, is that we are going to talk, when I say we're going to talk about you, we're going to talk about you. And if you can't hold to that, then I'm going to leave the room and I'll figure out something else. 
uh, my boundary is that you can't, you know, yell at me. If you yell at me, I'm going to whatever, right? And then when they do, because they will, they'll test it, do the thing you said you were going to do. Just try to be careful with your boundaries and not make them, you know, uh, things where you're, you know, burning down the house. And we'll, I'm going to go right to the lawyer and get a divorce if you yell at me. You know, don't, I wouldn't start there. I would start with something else and show your seriousness so that the other person can really rise, hopefully, to the occasion. Again, most people are not trying to be assholes. They, they just learn this way of doing it, and it's all they know, and they're scared and upset. So, you know, try to be a team about it while holding your boundary. Try to be loving about it while holding your boundary. And number five, if all else fails, is that you really need to seek professional help to guide you through this, you know, whatever is going on in this relationship. If you're being manipulated, you know, a lot, or if there's a lot of gaslighting or other things, or you feel obviously in danger, it's time. I mean, I love being here with you. I always is my goal that this is like free therapy, you know, that I'm talking about what works. I'm using all my experience. I'm talking about the research. I want you, I want good information to be accessible to everyone. And sometimes there is no substitute for speaking one-on-one -on -one with, a, with a, a qualified mental health professional. I just need to say that. So getting the help, getting the support, it's really important. And if, you, you know, if you've tried all the things I say and you've really gone to town on this and nothing is changing or working, then it is time to up it. You're, if, you were, if you were sick with something physical, if you had a cold or something and you were doing all the suggestions, you were listening to some doc MD on, or naturopath or something, somebody who knew their shit about colds on a podcast and you were doing all the things but nothing was working and the cold was persistent, I would say, guess what? Time to go physically see someone and see if this is something else. You know, there might be another diagnosis. There might be something you're missing. It's the same thing with your mental health. It's sad to me that we treat mental health so we discard it so readily, but you really, you want to look at that too. All right. So I'm just going to wrap up by saying, you know, this is really about you and taking responsibility. It's not about changing the other person because that'll happen if you change because that's just what happens as we change. The people around us have to change. They don't have much choice um, because what they were doing wasn't working. So they'll do other things, but that's not your motivation. Your motivation is not about changing the other person. It's, you know, what can you do to feel better in their presence right now? That's what you're looking at. You know, my idol, uh, one of my idols, Viktor Frankl, who I talk about a lot, um, Man's Search for Meaning, da da da. He had a, a famous quote that when we're no longer able to change a situation, we're forced to change ourselves. And that is really what I live by. You know, that's it. You know, I, I understand that right now you don't feel like maybe you can leave your partner or quit your job or never speak to your mom again. And I'm not even advocating that. I'm not advocating any of those things anyway many making changes right where you are is incredibly empowering you know because just leaving is kind of the easiest thing in some ways but to but you will likely repeat the pattern with someone else so or somewhere else you'll get a job that treats you like crap again you'll get with another partner who's emotionally abusive you'll you know you'll uh i don't know never speak to your mother again but you'll you know, allow friends in who treat you like she did. I don't know. That's what happens. But when you can stop and take power in the relationship and stop engaging in the power struggle and the arguments, <clears throat> that's where things change. You can then leave. You can then quit the job. You can then, but you have changed. You're a different energy. You're going to go into the next thing being in a different place. And that's, you know, really what it's all about. So, Focus on changing yourself. Focus on what you can do day to day to, you know, to feel better, um, more satisfied and more joyous. Okay. That is it for today. Thank you for hanging with me. This was a lot and I was coughing at you and swearing. I, I don't know. Uh, but uh, I, I'm hoping today was really helpful. It was, oh, as always, it's so helpful when I do, when I write up the podcast, and when I put everything together, it really helps me grow as a person. So I appreciate that in our relationship because um, you keep listening. So I keep doing it. So I keep growing, you keep growing. And it's really cool. That's why we have a relationship. I love you so, so much. I do. I'm feeling that.
I start crying on camera. I'm not going to, though. I'm not going to. I'm, I'm thinking of other things. Uh, I do love you deeply, and I hope you have an amazing week, and I'll talk to you real soon.